Given what we saw last week and how the army uh, is fairly notorious in Zimbabwe in dealing uh, with any kind of dissent, should people be worried when the head of state says people who are working against us will be flushed out? I think it's actually words that are not uh, supposed to be coming out, you know, from a head of state who says that, you know, uh, people are dark forces and he says that, you know, people, um, you know, are going to be flushed out because those kind of words, you know, are basically implying that any head of state is going to be head of state of all people that like him. But there is no state anywhere in the world where everyone votes for a particular president. You've got a state where people will not like a president and they will always speak against him and they'll, you know, uh, criticize or critique his methods and everything else, but nobody's flushed out. I think um, in, in the statements that were said by President Naga show that he's very wrong now. He's real gone completely off the rail. So when he came to uh, the television, uh, there was, I suppose, an expectation that he might address things specifically, but... He didn't seem to do that, rather entrench him, his position. In fact, I think um, if, if we are to read anything from what he is saying, it is very clear that he is responding in a way, I think, to calls that um, from, you know, people like, uh, I mean, the EFF leader and other people that have been commenting about the things that are happening in Zimbabwe, including the United Nations, uh, because when he is saying that um, we are going to stand against those that... Um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, dark forces or those that are trying to interfere and bring, you know, disorder. He's actually trying to say that anyone, and, and he's, he talks about, you know, the jurisdiction. I think that word is carefully chosen to say this is my jurisdiction and no one is allowed in here. And he's trying to intimidate and tell everyone that he's not going to be budging. He is standing, you know, uh, by his word that, you know, uh, I mean, maybe by the word of President Mugabe that, you know, uh, he's going to keep his Zimbabwe and do as he pleases with it. Do you think that he genuinely believes that um, foreign forces are working against him and using Zimbabweans uh, to that end? I don't think so. I think he knows completely that there are no foreign forces that are, I mean, are working against him. I think he knows that um, he's, he, he knows that he's a failure. He has failed the country. He, when, when he came into power, you know, people supported him and he was expected to deliver and he did not deliver on any of the promises that he even made. I mean, you know, the business, I mean, the, the country's open for business mantra has not real uh, materialized with anything. We've got uh, journalist Chingono who's actually arrested now. And what is he arrested for? For highlighting or basically speaking against corruption. And that shows that he's not even working on the corruption. He doesn't want anyone to speak against him or against bad practices in his government. So what we are basically seeing right now is we are seeing a man who desperately is trying to hold on to power, while he's, he knows that he is there and failing to deliver, you know, to the people that elected him. I mean, he promised jobs, and those jobs are not there. Unemployment is still sitting, you know, above 90 percent. And the money, the country doesn't have a currency today. So he has completely failed to transform that economy, and as a result, he's just holding on to power using um, brute force. Do you think that uh, he's failing to read the temperature both inside and outside the country? Social media is anecdotal well, by and large, but it does represent an overwhelming feeling that's out there. Well, look, I, I think that um, he, he is one thing for sure is that he is aware that, you know, there is a general mood you know, and, and feeling that he has failed and it's very clear and it's apparent to him as well. But what is basically happening is, what he's interested in seeing happening is, is, is to entrench his incumbency and his friends because there is an agreement and a pact with the army generals. I think, you know, as we see that he's continuing to appoint, you know, army generals. I mean, we, we, we had an appointment, I think, today, if that statement is anything to go by, you know, of a secretary, permanent secretary for health, someone from the army, so you can see the government is completely becoming army because he's trying to make sure that they can keep holding on to that. So they don't want to leave. And he knows that people outside are now unhappy about what is happening. But he has been comforted. He had been comforted for a long period of time by the failure of the AU and the SADC to speak decisively 
against these particular actions. But seeing that now a lot of people are starting to speak, looking at the social media, and I think maybe when he's talking about dark forces, he's talking about social media. So there is this, you know, phantom, you know, this uh, uh, enemy that is, is imaginary, that he wants to tell people that he's protecting them against, and that is probably the social media, which is now making people alert and aware that they are unhappy with what is happening and they're going to stand against them. Is it a, an indictment on these regional bodies, SADAC, African Union, COMESA even, if we want to uh, include them, that no head of state has said anything? Indeed. It is a very serious indictment, I think, you know, this far, because we have seen, you know, those that are in opposition standing up and saying, uh, you know, something. But we have seen that the AU has kept quiet and the subject and other heads of state have not said anything. We are not shocked, I mean, because, you know, there is a tendency, I think, you know, that started from the quiet diplomacy during President, I mean, Thabo Mbeki's era. But we're also aware that, you know, um, AU and SADC want to stand, you know, by the principle of non-interference and, you know, respect of a sovereign state, which is what we see President Mnangagwa referring and alluding to when he talks about the jurisdiction. But what that means is that, you know, they forget that in all those documents that talk about, you know, state sovereignty, there is a very clear, uh, I mean, mention of the issue of human rights issues, that wherever human rights, you know, are being violated, then, you know, uh, the, 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 the organs or basically these regional bodies must, you know, get involved in a way. So the mere fact that all these head of states are not saying anything right now, when we see journalists, when we see opposition leaders, you know, being arrested, we see the army toy toying on the street and marching and singing and intimidating people. That shows that, you know, definitely, you know, we cannot really rely on these regional bodies. And they are failing in their duty because these regional bodies would not be there if we, the people, were not there. What is really going on in Zimbabwe? It, it, on the one hand, we see what we're seeing on the surface, which is all these arrests, abductions, alleged torture. But some would say that actually behind the scenes, it's a struggle for power, it's infighting within ZANU-PF, and that um, there are forces within the organization rather than external that perhaps are behind a lot of what we're seeing. It's, it's very true. I mean, there are big problems because ZANU-PF on its own, the people in ZANU-PF are not completely happy because what is happening in terms of the economy is such that only those that are, you know, within the corridors of power are able to satisfy their needs because they can buy outside the country, they can get the money. But those that are their supporters as well have gotten to a point or even those that are not completely, you know, within the corridors of power are not able to access basic commodities. They're not able to access, you know, fuel. You know, they're not able to access their money. So within themselves, there is a fight and it is likely to be a dog eat dog situation because everyone is saying, we need to be inside in order for us to, 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 to continue to survive. But unfortunately, um, it would be, you know, impossible to provide for everyone that is there. So there are serious fights. And in any case, there are also those that, you know, went out with um, the uh, 2017 coup, that those that fell out of grace and mess. So they are also sitting outside and they are very unhappy. They are still looking back and trying to see how they can work their way in. So ZANU-PF is actually at I mean, at a very precarious condition now, it is actually heading towards a serious implosion, which can take place any time. If left unchecked, what scenarios can you see playing out? Well, uh, what is likely to happen, obviously, I think is a situation that is more or less like what happened. Remember when we went to the, when the coup took place last year, that was a, a complete split again into two groups and which were then resolved by completely, you know, abandoning, you know, the other group that feared that they were going to be killed. So what is basically happening is that now there are small groups that are, are starting to form within ZANU-PF, and some of them are actually being led by those guys that were ousted, you know, during 2017. So ZANU-PF is likely to disintegrate completely, and those that will remain are those that in power that will try to protect and ensure that they continue in power. But the likelihood is that if the people that are, actually going to be ousted or those groups that are going to lose are going to realize that they cannot stand, they cannot win against ZANU-PF on their own. They might then decide to join with other oppositions. And in the long run and sooner than later, there is a very huge likelihood that, you know, ZANU-PF will have to succumb and crumble. But unfortunately, it might do that, 
But the biggest problem is that the people that will be leading that are the very same people that were also acting very corruptly. And now to think that they might have been redeemed to such an extent that they might be changed, you know, when they come in, it becomes another problem because a very good case in question is the case of, you know, President Mnangagwa. He ran out of the country. He was unhappy. He was going to, he was, uh, I mean, uh, alleging that he was going to get killed. And when he comes back, he continues exactly on the same trajectory that President Mugabe was going on and he could not change because that is all what he knows. So the people that are from ZANU-PF only know one style of governance. And that means they are not likely to be able to change anything, you know, whatever happens. So if flushing out means an escalation of arrests and abductions and uh, people are not very optimistic that uh, they'll get help from the African Union, could this end up at the UN Security Council? Well, you see, this is where the big problem is. The AU has um, on several occasions said that, you know, if you remember as well, I think the issue of uh, Libya, that uh, the, 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 the AU was quite um, upbeat and relatively unhappy, saying, you know, African issues must be dealt, you know, by the AU and the UN can only come, in, you know, up at the invite of, you know, the AU. So the likelihood, what we're going to see, you know, basically because of this flushing out, which basically, again, implies that those people that are not happy, you know, with President Mnangava, if they are being flushed out, it means they are flushed out of the country. So they are going to be spewed out of the country and spit into South Africa. So South Africa is likely to see another insurgent, huge volumes of people coming into South Africa, running away from Zimbabwe, and the country remaining very empty. But the United Nations Security Council coming up and saying something, it's very, very unlikely because African leaders are starting to come together to protect each other and to say uh, nothing is going to go to the United Nations you know, Security Council unless, obviously, um, you know, they are the ones that refer it. But looking at the relationship that we have, you know, with South Africa, China, and, and, and I mean, and the BRICS, you know, which are strategic partners, I think voting is not likely to support that, you know, the UN is going to get involved. Do Zimbabweans have enough to do their own Arab Spring or they'll just endure? Well, unfortunately, I think this is where the big problem is, you know, the Zimbabweans, are, it's very unlikely that they'll be able to do their own Arab Springs because, you know, um, President Mnangagwa and, you know, his, 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 his officials, they are not hesitant on using brute force. They showed that in August 2019 when they killed people and in January again when they were full, you know, riot. And I think that the mere fact that on the 31st the towns were so deserted, people could not even go to town shows that, you know, the people will not dare go out there because they know that President Nangakwa is not going to hesitate to shoot them. He's going to kill them. He is the, you know, he was the master, you know, uh, a planner or rather, you know, almost, at, I mean, at, at the helm of the Kukura Wundi, those killings. So Zimbabweans are very aware of what the man is capable of doing. And as a result, from within Zimbabwe and Arab Spring, I doubt very much. But from outside Zimbabwe, there is a likelihood that we might actually see you know, more heightened, you know, act of um, probably, you know, uh, 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 petitioning, you know, demonstrations, you know, against, you know, the embassies and consulates. And that might be what would force maybe neighboring countries and the African regional bodies to stand up and end up saying something, but not from within. It's unlikely. So the challenge that the president has, he's been trying very hard to reshape Zimbabwe's image uh, to the West so that he can get assistance and get aid and, and uh, perhaps even borrow money from these institutions. Uh, we saw him uh, sign a document saying that he'll pay back uh, the white farmers uh, for improvements to farms as seen as a step towards that. This then, I'm sure, is really uh, muddying the waters yet again for him and that it'll be difficult to go out there again with uh, uh, hands for help. I, I suppose those are the dark forces. I think this is what you are saying when you said, you know, we are struggling against COVID. You know, he's speaking about all of these problems that the whole world is facing as if they are only his problems. Because, you know, uh, it's, it's like the world or, you know, nature is conniving against him. Because if you look at the fact that, you know, he says he's going to pay white farmers, but with what money, where is he going to get that money? So he signs documents to say, I want to pay white farmers. Then the next thing, he wants to take those documents and go begging and say to the IMF and other bodies, could I please have the money to go and pay these farmers? So he's actually making a promise to pay people 
on money which he does not have because the country doesn't have the money. And whatever money that comes in, it gets stolen. You know, these tenders get given to their friends. So whatever mantra that he talks about, that this is what he wants to do, he does not have the capacity to do it because he is incapable of dealing with the corruption and the rot that is within his government and the patronage politics that is practiced there, which ensures that all the people that are in there, they either have got something against him or they're allowed to do as they please and no one is going to be prosecuted, you know, for doing something wrong. We know that we have heard a lot about, um, you know, the, 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 the Zuba scandal, I mean, uh, the Obed Mbofus of ZANU-PF, and you know what they stole, but nothing has really come up. There is no meaningful investigation that has ever, you know, been done. But in fact, what we see happening is we actually see these institutions that are supposed to curb, you know, uh, corruption, you know, being used to persecute, you know, those people that are not friends, you know, or those that are seen as dissenting or as problematic against, you know, the, the president and his friends. So at the end of the day, whatever that he's saying, it is just, you know, um, a mere smoke screen. He doesn't mean what he's saying.